Vice President Kamala Harris appears to be the front runner to become the Democratic presidential nominee. And now the GOP has to adjust its campaign strategy as it faces a new opponent. CBS News political correspondent Caitlin Huey Burns joins us from our D.C. Bureau. Caitlin, I just want to get your reaction. We had Daniel Alvarez, Trump campaign spokesperson on, um, or advisor rather, in our uh, the beginning of the show. And you could so, so start to see some of the strategy taking shape, really attaching Harris to border policy, trying to paint her as an extremist. Yeah, Lindsay, great to be with you. As you know, I was talking to you last night from the Trump campaign rally in Michigan. And at the time, we were asking campaign advisors, you know, whether uh, their strategy would change if Biden was uh, replaced at the top of the ticket. And they were telling us that they believe that uh, everything in terms of Biden's agenda will transfer on to Harris. They've been calling her today an enabler in chief and uh, criticizing her for covering up, in their words, uh, questions about about Biden's mental acuity. But there, there's no doubt that Biden was the one they wanted to run against. They built an entire campaign focused on Biden, his mental acuity and fitness for office, his policies, particularly on the border and uh, immigration and the economy. Um, now they have to shift strategy, and it is unclear, as you heard uh, Danielle mention, um, who they may be not only running against at the top of the ticket, although it looks like people are coalescing around Harris, but also who the running mate might be. And that, you know, raises some, some uh, stakes for J.D. Vance. Do you get a sense that Republicans will launch a fight to keep Biden in the race if there are even mechanisms in place for that to happen because they viewed him as, in their eyes, beatable? Well, it was interesting because you saw the, the, the social media post from Donald Trump today saying, now we have to start all over, essentially, and was asking for a refund uh, because of all the money that they've spent uh, against Biden. Um, that's not realistic at this point. Of course, it's up to Democrats. Joe Biden was the one who had to decide whether to stay in, and he has decided, of course, to step out. Uh, Republicans now have to figure out, you know, how to wage a campaign against this ticket. So, you know, I've been talking to Republicans today, and, and they think that this just transfers over to Harris, that they can use everything they were going after Biden uh, to go after Harris. But there's a big vulnerability now uh, that is kind of removed from that ticket, and that's the age question. Um, and that's an enthusiasm question, perhaps. That's what remains to be seen is, you know, will this selection of Harris, if it does indeed turn out to be her, does that galvanize a depleted Democratic base? That was something that Republicans had been sort of banking on. When I talked to an advisor to the campaign last night, they said even if Harris, you know, galvanizes the base, and especially black voters, that the Trump campaign could turn out uh, their base, uh, they have a proven ability to do so, and also could uh, turn out uh, white voters at higher margins. So that's something to kind of keep an eye on. Now they have this, you know, big task of also defining a potential vice presidential pick who may not be kind of nationally defined. Does the age question now jump to the other ticket? You know, it's interesting because they are, you know, Trump and Biden are around the same age. But throughout all of this, Trump has been making the case to his supporters that this is not about age, it's about competence. He repeats that line over and over again. And when you talk to Trump supporters and, you know, I've asked them about the age question for Trump, um, they have no qualms about it. Uh, but it was interesting to note, of course, that they selected J.D. Vance as a generational contrast. Um, that's a contrast not, you know, designed to be a contrast to Biden but it's also a contrast to uh, the top of the ticket. So, uh, you know, that was the age question for Biden was kind of hovering over this entire campaign. And the RNC had been quite successful in elevating videos of any time Biden stumbled or, uh, you know, was, you know, just appeared to be weakened, um, that those videos kind of went viral there. Uh, so again, this campaign built around campaigning against something else, and now with just three or so months to go, they have to shift strategy. But they've also maintained that their strategy remains in the Midwest, and that's also going to be a question if Kamala Harris can pull those voters. Caitlin Huey Burns, thank you. Even Democrats are worried about the president's age. The Wall Street Journal had a poll showing two-thirds of Democrats say Joe Biden is too old to run again. Are you prepared to be commander-in-chief? Yes, I am, if necessary. But Joe Biden is going to be fine. And let me tell you something. 
I work with Joe Biden every day. Under Joe Biden's leadership, we have transformed and are in the process of transforming America's infrastructure with an historic investment in not only roads and bridges, but high-speed internet, what we are doing around issues like lead pipes, and, and I could go on and on. That was Vice President Kamala Harris on Face the Nation back in September of 2023. And as we look forward, I want to bring in Chuck Rocha. He joins us now. Chuck is a former senior advisor to Senator Bernie Sanders' 2020 presidential campaign and a Democratic strategist. Chuck, how should Democrats get behind Harris as the presidential nominee? We've been looking and we've been living through all kinds of nightmarish uh, things as a consultant. And what I mean by that as a Democratic consultant is we've been fighting each other over should he stay in, should he not stay in after the debate. And anytime we're talking about ourselves and not the opponent, we are losing. Well, today, the Democratic Party got a shot of energy. You can see it in the fundraising numbers. You can see it with the folks that are jumping to fall in line. And I think this is exactly what you need to be doing if you're going to have any chance to beat Donald Trump. So I'm excited about what I'm seeing, and I'm seeing my party come together. What about Wild Card Mansion? Oh, I think that he likes to see his name in the press, and I think that he is used to being the center of attention, but he's going to quickly learn. I've been to every single Democratic convention since 1996 when I was the youngest delegate from the state of Texas. Democratic delegates are yellow dog Democrats, and they ain't going to have no time for somebody who registered as an independent. Okay, let's talk about the DNC. Uh, we are, believe it or not, one month away. How do you see preparations changing behind the scenes right now? Well, first of all, they're having to reprint a lot of signs and a lot of T-shirts and a lot of buttons. That's the <laughs> first thing they're doing. The ticket officially. <laughs> That's right. So they've taken all those Biden signs and stuff and said, all right, there's going to be a discount down at the corner store. But anyway, I'm being serious, but also not serious because we need to have a nominee and a ticket so we can have a logo. As a guy that designs mail and makes TV commercials, this is something really important because as you saw with the Republican convention, branding means something. Yep. So yeah, sure, it matters who is picked and is it somebody from Pennsylvania or somebody from North Carolina like you've been talking about, but the branding matters because we're going to have a lot of excitement around this convention. So that's the first thing, just the nuance. And then it's all the committees. It's changing what the delegates will be doing. These delegate breakfasts that happen every morning now will have a lot more impact than they would have in the years past. Chuck. We know that we have seen fracturing in the Republican Party over the last several years, but this past week in the RNC, we did see people fall in line. We saw Nikki Haley speak at the RNC. We saw people wear white bandages on their ears as a show of solidarity for Trump. How do you compete with the momentum that they have right now? It's just a con contrast, and I tell this to all my candidates, you can't get worried about things you can't control. But the things you can control is drawing a stark contrast between Donald Trump and now Vice President Harris on what they've accomplished and a reason to rehire Ms. Harris for the next four years and make sure that folks remember what it was like when Donald Trump's in office. You stay focused on what you've done. Democrats need to get tough and they need to get proud. We need to be proud of what we've done, proud of what Joe Biden has accomplished, and then tell the American voters what we have planned for them over the next four years and how that contrasts with a dangerous man like Donald Trump. That's how you get past it is contrast and being very, very proud of what you've done. Chuck Rocha, thanks for joining us. Thank you.